This is the Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk, AM 1150. Welcome back to the Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, July 26th show. I bring into studio each week the best of the best experts in our local market on everything regarding your money. And I'm here to help you in any economy that we're in. And I think we've got some great things going on in the economy right now. And maybe you're looking for some opportunities. Uh, to invest. And if, by the way, you're listening to a rebroadcast of this show coming on at a different time or day, it is a rebroadcast of my show. And you can feel free to give the show a call 1 855 41150. Again, that's 1 855 400 1150 or online at the moneyhour.com. And I can connect you with any of the guests that you might have missed on the regular time, which comes on Saturday. And in studio right now, retirement is a financial goal common to just about anyone who works for a living. And a question that many of my listeners have is, how can I financially prepare myself for retirement? Most people think think solely on savings, saving their money, maybe investing in the market, um, depending on what the right time is. But have you ever thought about investing in real estate as a retirement tool? You, know, you may have thought about at your, the roof over your head as an opportunity, but let's take it for an, a different angle and think about retirement. Today, we have financial professional and female business owner, Janice Hammond, here with us to give us an insight into this very topic. Janice, thank you so much to, for coming back in studio. It's always a pleasure to have you here. No problem. Love to educate. Let's go ahead and I want to give a little bio about Janice and we'll get right into uh, her segment. Jan- Janice recognizes the need for a more conservative approach to investing that strives to outpace inflation and her firm caters to the unique needs of each individual. So after 10 years in the financial industry, Janice opened her doors to Sunrise Financial Services in order to help people avoid common mistakes when planning for retirement. So uh, Janice, let's go ahead and get started with some general ideas about when people commonly retire and about how much people are saving on an average for a big event? Well, the age can really range based on the amount of money you have saved and are planning to spend during your retirement. So most people have a general goal that they will retire by the age of, say, 65. But my recent research from the official Social Security website, which is uh, www.ssa.gov, which I recommend everyone go visit and uh, and know your numbers there. But I discovered that the normal quote-unquote retirement age has moved up to the age of 67. And with the higher cost of living and the desire to maintain your lifestyle, it is definitely taking some people longer to reach their retirement age goal. Uh, so the amount of money you want to save on average, like I said, is really a vast range based on how much you're going to spend each year in retirement. And, uh, you know, everybody has a different idea of what living comfortably means and making sure that it's within your means. Makes total sense. And I'm actually going to show uh, Dave the stats that you pulled because you know he's getting ready to retire. And Mm -hmm. I think he's pretty lucky because he's a lot younger than (laughs) 67 years old. So what if your, your savings and Social Security don't add up to the amount that you feel is necessary but you still want to retire. What are some options? Um, there are a lot of people that are in that boat that they've they've saved and made tough decisions their whole life, and now it's time to figure out what they are going to spend their money on. Um, so it's exactly where another income stream can come into play, and you know how much I like income streams mm-hmm. in retirement. Uh, so, for example, your Social Security and your retirement plan, meaning either an IRA or a 401k or any kind of company plan that you have, maybe the results from those two only cover about 60% of your ideal income. Okay. Uh, so what will you do to supplement the other 40% that you need? And this is where another pillar of uh, retirement income stream comes from um, real estate. Uh, in addition to pension, Social Security, insured investments, um, I think real estate can be a great paycheck type investment and I'm a big uh, believer in the real estate market, Janice, obviously, because I do mortgages and I wouldn't be mm-hmm. doing mortgages if I if, if I didn't believe in real estate. And I think it is important to have that. But a, a lot of people and some of my listeners might be thinking, gosh, what a, what a lot of work to have an actual mm-hmm. real property. Yeah, no, I, I think that, uh, well, I have a lot of people that ask me, is real estate a good investment? And the answer to that is, do you want to be a landlord? Mm-hmm. And if you don't, 
then you have your answer right there. It is not a good investment for you. But uh, it's not as much work as, as you would think. And there are actually many different ways of owning real estate and making a profit off of it without having to constantly keep your thumb on it. So don't get me wrong. If you want to stay busy in retirement, there are lots of ways we can keep busy. Um, and uh, we can go through a few of these today. So Dave likes to keep busy, Janice. But for me, when I retired, I want to do as little but little as possible. So let's start mm-hmm. with ones that could potentially take the most work and go from there. Sure. Um, I'm with you. I'm I'm a beach bum. And Mike is like Dave, right? Yeah. He, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> opposite attract. Exactly. Uh, so one of the first things to look at is the number is that the number of renters are going up. According to the National Multifamily Housing Council, 35 percent of people are now renting, and this is projected to keep rising with the coming year. So this means that there are going to be more opportunities for retirees to have potential income streams, and a great way to do this, for example, if you're looking to purchase a new house, Mm -hmm. keep the one you currently own and rent it out once you move. Since rental properties offer tax benefits and that will um, help offset the tax liability, having income from rentals is one of the more tax efficient ways to create retirement income. So Janice, could you share with my listeners what would be the negatives to doing this? Um, well, number one, if you don't want to be a landlord in mm-hmm. retirement, because it's, I mean, you're taking calls 24 hours a day, potentially. Uh, so the, it is a little bit higher maintenance. Um, so if you, if you do want to take time to relax as much as possible, this could be something that you'd want to steer away from. Renting out a home means you are the landlord, which entails finding renters, mm-hmm. upkeeping the house, which can be expensive and filing a more complicated tax return for sure. So what about renting out? your home, your own home, Janice? Uh, I think that's a great idea. And there's a couple different ways you can do that. I mean, there's VRBO now. So you rent out your home to on short term stays, um, you house trade. So if you're going to an extended uh, place, you might trade houses with somebody there. Um, and uh, and the nice thing is if you rent out your home, you don't need to worry about selling it if you want to go travel and things like that. So maybe you want to wait until later till prices rise. And uh, as long as you have a good renter in her home, you can, you can usually count on a steady monthly income. Um, so just make sure you want to be a landlord. Okay. So these options are really good ideas, uh, Janice, to think about when looking to go to the rental route. What other options could people look into if they have decided that renting and being a landlord is not right for them? Well, um, as you're familiar with, there's using the equity in your home. So Mm -hmm. uh, using it as a reverse mortgage, Mm -hmm. there's a couple different ways you can go about doing that. Um, And you can look for things like this. So When I was researching this, I found a website, usnews.com. They covered three of the main ways people choose to do this. So one is a home equity line, Mm -hmm. uh, followed by a home equity line or cash out refinance, which is it can also be, um, you know, in addition to doing a reverse mortgage. So it really depends on what you need and if that's the best thing for you. So. Obviously, you specialize on this. What do you think? Well, interest rates uh, at at historical low rates, and I know we've been saying this forever because they just are not going up, but they have to they have to go up sooner or later. Mm -hmm. And so this is an opportunity that you definitely are in a position to miss. And uh, so with the rates so low right now, the cost to borrow is so inexpensive. Looking and and talking with you and Janice, what makes more sense there on whether they can get that and and earn compound in another class Mm -hmm. uh, is something you want to look at. You just want to be really careful as an individual that you're being smart when you're looking at a home equity line of credits, uh, taking cash on your property, because a lot of people, that's one of the reasons that a lot of people lost their homes is they did a lot of equity repositioning and a lot of the fault to the banks because the banks were lending on clients that they should have never lent on where there's been a lot of stop to that now that you really have to financially be able to prove for yeah. these transactions. Um, but you want to make sure that you're putting yourself in a good position and you're not putting yourself as at risk because it's a little harder to sell this, as you said, than it would be for maybe some other some other investments yeah. or cash in the bank. Irresponsible lending and borrowing come to mind when yes. you think about those things. So Janice, can you, what about the, the financial pros and cons? 
Um, so with each scenario, you're borrowing against the value of your own home. So um, if you're not able to make the payments that you have set, then you definitely are at risk of losing your home. Um, whereas if you take the money and invest it, you may not be guaranteed that your rate of return will beat the interest rate that you're actually paying on the mortgage. Mm-hmm. So it's a gamble either Either yep. way that you go in that direction, I think. So let's give a let's give the pros to uh, my listeners. Mm-hmm. All right. So the money that you have borrowed against your home can actually be used to pay off any higher interest rate debt or important home maintenance concerns that you might have. Uh, Some people choose to invest this money in something that can maybe provide additional income in retirement. And this is a good choice if your returns are greater than the interest uh, you will be paying on if you have a new or second mortgage. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes it's a good idea to maybe have just an, an open home equity line on your house, even if you don't carry a balance on it, just in case, you know, it's uh, something you can use to maybe lend money to your children or mm-hmm. whatever's important to you. But I mean, uh, and again, if you're borrowing money, that's another thing is there's there may not be as much left over if leaving a legacy is important for you. I think the open the home equity line of credit is is a you can't really go wrong by mm-hmm. having a home equity line of credit unless you totally actually agree. use the money. Right. So get it for the maximum. Have that money set up mm-hmm. just as Jana said. If there if there was a reason that you do need it, you just need to be smart with your money uh, as you're taking that borrowing against that home equity line of credit. So these are some uh, really good things to consider, Janice. I think uh, I think we've got a little more time. Another option. What do you say? So uh, the last one I think is probably my favorite because okay. it's it's the most strategic. Uh, And so let's end on the 1031 exchange. Okay. So um, if you look up 1031 exchanges, there are many websites that give you long, drawn-out explanations of what it is. And don't get me wrong, there's definitely a handful to learn on this, but I want to break it down so it's easy for everyone to understand. So long story short, a 1031 exchange, and this is according to uh, APIExchange.com, allows an investor to sell a property to reinvest the proceeds in a new property and to defer the capital gains taxes on there. Mm -hmm. So it can protect investors from capital gains taxes as well as facilitating significant portfolio growth and increased returns on investment. So in order to get the full potential of these best investments or benefits, sorry, it is extremely important to make sure you research fully and understand the process at hand. Talk to you, talk to a CPA, talk to a financial planner and make sure that you aren't overlooking uh, things and making mistakes that other people do. Um, so uh, please ask me any questions that you have. And I, you know, it's, it's excellent, Janice. And I, you, you do, you've got to have the right people working for you. I can't say enough about Janice, um, and everything that she's provided for my listeners, um, for, for myself personally. And I just highly encourage to give her a call, uh, pick up the phone, call her directly if you want to at 206-420-8520. Uh, if you don't have a pen to write it down, cause you might be driving in your car, you should all have my number member memorize here at the show. one 855 Hundred eleven fifty, Janice. Thank you again so much for coming back in studio. It's always a pleasure um, to have you and the wealth of information that you provide for my listeners. I so much appreciate you. Thanks, Tina. You too. Coming up next in the Money Hour, here to discuss what's happening in today's real estate market and how consumers are reacting to this current environment. Kathy Morrow with Remax Performance Plus, right here on eleven fifty AM KKNW. After the short break.